At this point, I don't know if this is turning out to be a hat or a basket. Hi guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society. Today we'll be making this Tofino basket together. This is the squarish basket. I also have a crochet along for the round one, so I will link that in the description box below. This is a perfect basket for a side table to place some keys or chapstick, things like that. You can also use this basket for some crocheted goodies while you're working to keep on your desk or near you when you are crocheting up your project. So we're going to head right to supplies and then we're going to get started by making the basket. For supplies, I used a DK sport weight yarn. This is We Are Knitters the Cotton. It's super soft and really nice to work with. I'm also using three different crochet hooks for this pattern and you might be thinking that I've lost my mind and maybe I have, but I will explain more in the pattern why I did this. So we have an H hook, an I hook, and a G hook. Then you'll want to grab a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, some stitch markers if you like to mark your plates, and then a tape measure. This is really not needed, it's only if you want to get the exact size as I did for the pattern. I have all the yardage for the basket in my free pattern, which I will link in the description box below. We're going to get started with the basket. I have a double strand of my DK weight yarn and my 5 millimeter H hook. We are going to start by making four half double crochet into a magic circle. If you don't know how to do a half double crochet, I will link that video down below. And then I'm also going to link my easy magic circle just in case I go a little too quick for you. To start our magic circle, we are going to make a slip knot. We are going to wrap the yarn around two fingers. You can hold on to it with your ring finger. I'm going to push that back piece to the front. I can use my tail here to adjust my loop. I'm going to get set up with my yarn and then I like to place this loop in my middle finger. I hold that tail with my ring finger just so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I will place my hook underneath the loop yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through, and that makes a chain and that connects us so we can go on with our half double crochet. Now I'm going to make my first half double crochet. I'm going to yarn over, back through the loop, yarn over again, and then I'll have three loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. And at this point, you're connected, so if you need to let go of your magic circle, that's fine. So here's our second half double crochet into the magic circle. Here I'm starting my third. And then here is my fourth. I'm going to flip that tail out towards me and then tighten up my magic circle. Since we're starting with join rounds, we are going to slip stitch into the first half double crochet. I will have four stitches. I'm going to count one, two, three, and here is four. Here is my first half double crochet of the round. So I'm going to get underneath all four pieces of yarn and I'm going to slip stitch to join. And if you need a video on that, I'll also link that down below. Here I'm going to mark my slip stitch. I'm just going to do this for two or three rounds just to show you, just in case you like to keep track of this as well. For round two, we are going to make a chain one. So here is our chain one. And then we're going to make a half double crochet into our first stitch and three half double crochet into our next. We're going to make our first half double crochet into that same stitch as our slip stitch. So we are going to go into this first stitch here. I'm going to yarn over and make my first half double crochet. And then since this is our first stitch of round two, our first official stitch, I'm going to mark it with a stitch marker. You don't have to mark your slip stitch, but I do recommend marking your first stitch of the round. So in this stitch, we're going to make three half double crochet. This is one, 
two and three. Moving over a stitch, we're gonna make one half double crochet. And then in our last stitch, we're gonna make three half double crochet. Here is our first one, our second, and our third. So if you did mark your slip stitch, then you will see that you always end in the stitch right before your slip stitch. We want to join with a slip stitch in the first half double crochet. So we're gonna skip the slip stitch, skip the chain one, and we're gonna go right into that first stitch of the round. And that is the one that we have marked. So moving on, I'm just gonna mark this slip stitch. I'm gonna do this one more time to show you guys. You will be ending this round with eight stitches. For round three, we're gonna chain one and we are going to make a half double crochet into the first stitch, the one with the slip stitch, and then we're gonna do three into the next. So here is my half double crochet into that same stitch that we made our slip stitch. I'm gonna mark that with a stitch marker because it's my first stitch of the round. Then we're gonna move over a stitch and make three half double crochet. We need to put three half double crochet so we can start making our corner stitches. Move over a stitch and make one half double crochet. And then in the next stitch, we're gonna make three half double crochet. Moving over a stitch, we're gonna make one half double crochet. Then in your next stitch, make three half double crochet. Moving over a stitch, we're gonna do one half double crochet. And then in our last stitch, we're gonna be making three half double crochet. And you know it's our last stitch because it's the stitch right before our slip stitch. We're always gonna skip our slip stitch and skip our chain one before we slip stitch into the first half double crochet of the round. I'm gonna take out my slip stitch stitch marker and I'm gonna skip my slip stitch and my chain one and I'm gonna slip stitch directly into that first stitch. I'm just gonna pop out my stitch marker really quick. At this point you'll have 16 stitches so you just wanna count to make sure you have 16. We're starting to get a little bit of that square shape that we're looking for and we're gonna be working into these corner stitches by putting three half double crochets into them to keep this shape going. For round four we are gonna start by chaining one and then we're gonna make a half double crochet in the next two stitches, and then we're gonna put three in our corner stitch. So remember, we always wanna start in the stitch with our slip stitch, so we're gonna start here. Make a half double crochet into your first stitch, and then don't forget to mark that stitch. Then we're gonna make a half double crochet into the next stitch. And then we're gonna move over and make three half double crochet into this corner stitch. We're gonna move over and make a half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Then we're gonna move over and place three half double crochet into that corner stitch. Then we're gonna make a half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Then make three half double crochet into that corner stitch. Make a half double crochet into the next three stitches. Make three half double crochet into your corner stitch. And 
and then we're going to end with one half double crochet. We're going to skip our slip stitch, skip our chain one, and we're going to slip stitch the top of our first half double crochet. We'll have 24 stitches at this point. We're going to do a quick measurement, so I'm going to flatten my piece out a bit. And if you want to get the exact measurement that I have, I'm getting about two and a half inches across. If you get a bigger or smaller size, I wouldn't worry because your basket's just going to be a tad bit bigger or a tad bit smaller. But if you wanted to get the exact size, then you may need to go up a hook size or go down a hook size. But really, I'm just giving you an idea of where I'm at at this point. Starting round five, we're going to chain one. We're going to make a half double crochet into the next three stitches, and then we're going to put three half double crochet into our corner stitch. So starting in our stitch with our slip stitch, I'm going to make one half double crochet. I'm going to mark this stitch because it's my first stitch of the round. I'm going to make a half double crochet into the next two stitches. This is one. Then move over and make another one. And then in that corner stitch, we're going to make three half double crochet. So here is our first, go back into the same stitch, our second, and then our third. Now we're going to make a half double crochet into the next five stitches, and then we will place three in our corner stitch. So half double crochet in the next five. Here is the first, move over, here's number two, three, four, and five, and then we're gonna make three half double crochet into that corner stitch. Then we're gonna make a half double crochet into the next five stitches. Here is one, two, three, four, and five, and then we're going to do another three half double crochet into that corner stitch. Make a half double crochet into the next five stitches once again. Here is one, two, three, four, and five, and then we are going to make our last corner stitch, so make three half double crochet into that stitch. And then we're gonna end with two half double crochet. We're gonna end right before our slip stitch. So here is one, and then our last half double crochet. We're gonna skip our slip stitch, skip our chain one, and then we're gonna slip stitch into the top of our first half double crochet. At this point, you'll have 32 stitches. I have to take my stitch marker out to get under the stitch. So I'm going to complete my slip stitch. Again, at this point, you'll have 32 stitches. You can count just to make sure. And don't worry about this bump here. Um, it will lay down as we continue crocheting the basket. For round six, we're going to chain one. Then we're going to half double crochet into the next four stitches. So start with that first half double crochet into the same stitch as your slip stitch. And then add your stitch marker to the first stitch. From here, we're going to half double crochet into the next three. So here is one, two, and three. We're going to place three half double crochet into that corner stitch. And now we're going to half double crochet into the next seven stitches. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Go ahead and make three half double crochet into your corner stitch.
make a half double crochet in the next seven stitches. I'm gonna let you guys count this one. We're gonna make three half double crochet into our corner stitch. Make a half double crochet in the next seven stitches. I'm gonna let you count. Make three half double crochet into that corner stitch. And then we're gonna end with a half double crochet in the next three, stopping in the stitch right before our slip stitch. Okay, we're gonna skip our slip stitch, skip our chain one, and then we're gonna slip stitch into the top of our first stitch. At this point, we will have 40 stitches, so make sure you count your stitches. For round seven, we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna half double crochet in the next five stitches. So here, I'm gonna mark my first stitch. That was my first half double crochet. I'm gonna make my second, my third, fourth, and fifth. And then I'm gonna make my three half double crochet into the corner stitch. Make a half double crochet into the next nine stitches. Here's one, two, got a little caught up there, three, four, five, oops, six, seven, eight, and nine. We're gonna do three half doubles in our corner stitch. And then we'll make another half double crochet into the next nine stitches and I'll let you guys count. Place three half double crochet into your corner stitch. Half double crochet into the next nine stitches once again. Make three half double crochets into your corner stitch. And then we're gonna end with a half double crochet in the next four stitches. So here's one, two, three, and four. We're gonna skip our slip stitch, skip our chain one, and then we're gonna slip stitch to the top of our first stitch. And at this point, at the end of round seven, you'll have 48 stitches. For round eight, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm just gonna take out my stitch marker here and I'm gonna take out my hook. We are going to change to our eye hook. And the reason we're changing to a 5.5 millimeter hook is because we're gonna be doing slip stitches and slip stitches tend to bring the basket in because they're tighter. 
So even though I try to make them loose, I always lose that battle. So I went up a hook size to just help us out a bit. To begin our round, we're going to chain one and then we're gonna make a slip stitch into the back loop only. So we're still going into that same stitch that we worked into, but we're gonna go into the back loop only and then we're gonna grab this back bar right here. So we're gonna go underneath two stitches of the back bar. That first stitch is just a little tricky to get into, but then the ones after that are really easy because the hook kind of just slides behind the back loop and the back bar. And you'll see that as we continue on. Okay, so working in the same stitch as our slip stitch, we're gonna go into the back loop only, and then we're gonna grab that back bar that I showed you earlier, and then we're gonna try to make a loose slip stitch. It's easier said than done, but just try to keep your slip stitches as loose as you can. This is our first stitch of the round, so we're gonna grab our stitch marker and mark that stitch. And then we're just gonna continue all the way around going into the back loop only and then underneath that back bar. So you'll be going under four strands of yarn. We'll have two from the back loop and then two from the back bar. And just try to make a loose slip stitch. You'll see here that it gets it tends to be really easy to get under both of those stitches. Going under the back bar just gives our basket a little bit more stability. And I learned this trick from my friend Karen who has a cute little Etsy shop, uh, Cazolas. It's, um, she has a few patterns, she has really cute stuff. I'll link it down below if you wanna check it out. But I was testing a pattern for her and she did this and I thought it was genius. So thank you Karen, I stole your idea. But it really works to really help keep your basket um just give it a little more structure kind of so i want to say thank you for crocheting along with me i appreciate you joining me i know there's a lot of counting and stuff so always feel free to mute me as i always say if you haven't seen the other tofino basket i also have a round one and i have a crochet along for that so if you haven't seen that i'll link that down below and you can check that out as well this basket is a really great size i have one like next to my door for some keys and then I also have one near my office desk just for like extra crochet stuff that I find and just like pop it in there it's just the perfect size to keep little things that you find here and there to kind of keep them all in one spot I did name this basket after a really cute small town named Tofino and it's in Vancouver Island British Columbia so if you've ever been there please let me know in the comments below I am so in love with that place and I can't wait to go back if you're new to my channel, I usually am an amigurumi girl, so I do a lot of crochet alongs for amigurumi, so if you're interested in that or learning it, please check out uh, more of my crochet along videos. So I'm usually not a joined round kind of person. This is actually out of my comfort zone, but I thought it would be fun to just try a different design and see um, how it would come out. Now, it took me quite a while to come up with this design, um, hence why I used three different crochet hooks. I just couldn't get the look right the way I wanted it. And three different crochet hooks for one simple basket is a little absurd, but uh, that's how it went. So I guess I'm just trying to keep like life exciting or, or something. But just know that you can use the same hook size throughout the pattern. It just might look, your basket just might look a little different than mine. Okay, we're reaching the end of this round. And now we are going to slip our, skip our slip stitch, skip our chain one, and then we are going to slip stitch into the top of our first slip stitch. And that gets to be a little tight, so just work your way in there. At this point, we're still going to have 48 stitches. You can take a pause and count your stitches to make sure you have 48. Moving on to round nine, I'm just going to take out my stitch marker here. I'm going to chain one. And then we're going to loosely slip stitch into the back loop only all the way around. So we're going to start into that same stitch that we made our slip stitch. And I am going to loosely slip stitch into there. I'm going to place my stitch marker on the first stitch of the round. And then I'm going to continue to slip stitch into the back loop only for round 9 and 10. We're going to meet back at the end of round 10 for a color change and then we're also going to change our hook size for the last time before you go i do want to show you a little trick on counting our rounds i want to show you the ridges here this first ridge is considered round seven 
oops, <laughs> throwing stuff around. This is round seven. This ridge here will be round eight. And then we'll have round nine and 10. And I'll show you here to count easier. This is round seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you wanna make sure that you have all four of those ridges. I just did my last stitch of round 10. Here I'm gonna skip the slip stitch, skip the chain one, and then we're gonna slip stitch to the top of our first stitch. And that slip stitch is pretty tight, so you might have to take out your stitch marker. So this will be our last joined round. Okay, from here we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna change colors so we can grab our second color and for me that's my beige we still want to use double strands so grab that and put it to the side and then we're going to switch out our hooks i'm going to grab my g hook that's a four millimeter crochet hook so i'm going to get that in my loop and then tighten it up we are going to change colors so we are going to do it on our chain one for the next round so i am going to hold that new color with my hand, and then I'm gonna get set up like I would just to crochet. Pull tight on your old color, and then hold both of those with your finger. Yarn over and pull through, and that will be our chain one. So our chain one is still in the brown, but we're gonna start with our new color, which is the cream. For round 11, we are going to loosely single crochet into the back loop only for the next 48 stitches. We are going to work into that stitch that we made our slip stitch. We're still doing that. We're going to go into the back loop of that stitch. For me, it's just a little tricky right here. And then we're going to make a single crochet. I want to stress that it's a single crochet and not a slip stitch because we've been making a lot of those. So make your single crochet and then we're going to mark it with a stitch marker. I do have a video for a single crochet and I will link that down below. Continue to single crochet into the back loop only all the way around. We changed our hook size. We actually went down a hook size because we are gonna move into something called the waistcoat stitch. And when we do that stitch, it really kind of puffs out on us. So since our bottom of our basket kind of cinches in a little from our slip stitches, I didn't want these waistcoat stitches to be puffing out so much that the basket just looks awkward. So going down this hook size to a G really helped kind of suck in those waistcoat stitches. And I will show you that when we get a little further. Go ahead and snip off your excess yarn when you get a few stitches in and then we will weave in the ends pretty soon. So continue single crocheting all the way around in the back loop only and then we will meet back towards the end because I want to show you how we are going to start our continuous rounds. Okay so we're doing a few more single crochets. This is our last one. We're gonna stop before our slip stitch and our chain one. So here's our slip stitch, here's our chain one, and we are going to make a waistcoat stitch in our first stitch of the round, which is our beige stitch here. So we're not connecting with the slip stitch. We're gonna do something called continuous round. We're gonna start round 12 with something called the waistcoat stitch. So in order to make a waistcoat stitch, we are gonna make a single crochet, but instead of going through the top loops like we usually do, we are gonna go down the middle of the V. So here is our V stitch here on the bottom. We're gonna place our hook right down the middle of each stitch, and then we'll continue to make a single crochet. Place your hook in the middle of that V. I like to put my finger behind just to feel it come through. And then you'll see where the hook lies in the back. Make a regular single crochet. Try to make it as loose as you can. And then we're gonna place a stitch marker because it's our first stitch of the round. We're gonna go down the middle of the V for the next stitch. We're gonna place our hook through that V and we're gonna continue making our single crochet. Move over a stitch, go through the middle of the V and make your single crochet. These can get a bit awkward 
and they can be a little tight if you did make single crochets that were tighter but here's a look at what the waistcoat stitch looks like it just looks like a really pretty knitted stitch so we started with round 11 as our first change of color and we can count up from there continue doing the waistcoat stitch all the way around and then we'll meet back when we get closer to the end of this round we're reaching the end of round 12. I have a stitch here. I'm going to do my waistcoat stitch and then I'm going to work into that last stitch, the one before the stitch marker. So we'll still have 48 stitches at this point. We're going to be working in continuous rounds. So for round 13, I'm going to take out my stitch marker. I'm going to go into that first stitch. We're going to go down the middle of the V. We're continuing our waistcoat stitch. Place your first stitch into there and then mark it because this is your first stitch around 13. So for around 13 through 16 we are going to waistcoat stitch all the way around for the next 48 stitches. I'm not gonna lie the waistcoat stitch is a little bit tough on your hands so just go slow put on a show like really just zone out while you're doing this. You can take a pause if you'd like or you can do a few more rounds and put a stitch marker in and then weave in all of these ends so i'm going to do that now and then i'm going to continue crocheting from round 13 through 16 the waistcoat stitch we will meet back at the end of round 16. how are you guys doing i just reached the end of round 16. we still have 48 stitches and we will continue on with round 17 it's our last round all we're going to do is make slip stitches all the way around so i'm going to go underneath both loops i'm going to make a slip stitch and then i'm going to mark my first stitch around 17. so we're just going to go and make another slip stitch all the way around so we just want to leave a nice little edge on our basket so you're either loving me right now or hating me right now let me know what you think about the waistcoat stitch I really do love the look of it it's just not my favorite thing to crochet it just really is hard on my hands you'll have to let me know if it's rough on yours as well maybe like the ergonomic hooks are better for this kind of thing I'm not sure my hands don't really work well with those thicker hooks but you'll have to let me know what you guys think continue to slip stitch all the way around and then we will meet back towards the end of this round okay i'm nearing the end of round 17 i'm just gonna make my last slip stitch here so i'm gonna take out my stitch marker i'm gonna add like three more slip stitch because i want to do a seamless join and i want it to not have this really big ridge so get your hook underneath it gets a little tight here and just make a few more slip stitches when you work in continuous rounds it always leaves that little ridge from here leave a long tail and instead of fastening off we're just going to pull our yarn all the way out grab your yarn needle weave that yarn through your needle then you're going to find your stitch and you're going to move over to the left and this is my stitch right to the left i'm going to go underneath both loops and pull that through and now i'm going to go back to my original stitch and i'm going to go right down the middle of that v i'm going to pull that through and tight and that just gives us a little bit of a better join so now i'm just going to weave in my ends and that is it our basket is done I'm so proud of you guys <laughs> proud of you for sticking with me through this okay so our basket is done but it does look a little wobbly we want to kind of mold it into place into our four corners and that's what I'm trying to do here I'm trying to find those corners and make it look a little bit squarish and then you will notice that bottom that weird bottom hat we had goes totally flat once we move on like to our other rounds of the basket so here's our nice slip stitch ribbing and then it goes out a little bit with our waistcoat stitch and it really is perfect for just small crocheted notions or like 
side table keys and hand sanitizer and things like that. It's the perfect size for it. So I want to say thank you guys so much for joining me on this crochet along. If you like this video, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. Join me for more crochet alongs. I have a lot of fun holiday ones coming up, so please check those out and I will be seeing you soon. If you're looking for free crochet patterns, head over to yarnsociety.com and I'll see you guys next week.